Hello everyone, welcome to my watercolor painting channel and today we're going to be painting a clematis that I picked from my garden and it has its gorgeous purple color in it. So we're going to try to paint that one flower together. So let's start. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon where I upload watercolor tutorial lessons weekly. Join me and become my student. You would need a good quality paper. Uh, I've used here Arches 300 GSM cold press paper. I've also used my Windsor Newton watercolor set and brushes of several sizes, so I've used six four two zero and zero zero let's start mixing colors so for my first layer i've decided to use cobalt blue mixed with purple lake and also i've pre-mixed permanent rose mixed with purple lake so i'm going to be using these two combination for our first layer and then Add some extra colors separately and I'll talk more about it. So I'm using, as you can see on my palette, quite watery combination of the flowers of these colors. So you'll see that uh, they're not very saturated in colors and we don't need them to be. And we're going to start painting uh, wet on dry. So I didn't wet this uh, flower before, so it's completely dry. You can use the brush size 6 or 4, depending what you are better using. Uh, and also, uh, you can cover before you can cover all the stamens with masking fluid, or you can do like I've done. So I'm just gonna paint. Um, and leave those uh, stamens uh, untouched. Uh, so it's entirely up to you how you would like to do that. Uh, and let's start. So here I'm using the brush size number six and I am uh, adding uh, both of my combinations uh, on the petal and I'm I tend to use uh, permanent rose and purple lake more than a slightly colder combination, but I will add it afterwards. So I'm covering one petal and uh, with the tip of the brush I am moving paint towards edges so they're nice and neat. And then um, all the extra water and colour, I'm just pulling it uh, towards one side and then I will be collecting the extra water uh, out of the petal. While my petal is still wet, uh, I am using my brush size number 6 and I'm using combination of cobalt blue mixed with purple lake and I'm adding this color on the edges of each petal and then in some places I'm using my combination of permanent rose and purple lake as well. But I tend to use these colors on the edges uh, to sort of uh, show that um, surface of the petal is uneven and it's rather um, like a wavy structure towards the edges of the petals and then a very uh, distinctive for clematis is to have this like really dark and really big lines in the middle of the petals so i'm using a, a really saturated combination of uh, permanent rose with a little bit of purple lake and I'm loading it uh, to, um, to the center of my petal where it joins with uh, stamens and the other petals and then with my brush I will be pulling and um, making the lines all the way across the petal. So as you can see, I am charging this concentrated color of permanent rose and purple lake and I'm just loading it on the uh, bottom of each petal and I'm uh, dropping even more and more paint and I'm allowing it to bleed, to really spread across uh, the petal and then I am trying with my brush, with the tip of the brush to outline and leave the stamens untouched so they are not covered with paint whatsoever and then uh, with my brush I'm making those 
uh, vertical lines uh, which are so uh, distinctive for uh, clematis. I'm even using more of a permanent lake and uh, no, permanent rose color on its own to make those lines. So you can see that it's uh, uh, more pinkish color. Um, so and then I'm um, using my brush and I'm just pulling and blending the color together uh, for my uh, first petal and that's gonna be the base for our first layer for pretty much all the petals I will be just uh, looking at my reference pic picture and see where on whether or not uh, the this combination are slightly vary on each petal but mostly that's the base Moving on to my next petal, as you can see that I'm using the same color combinations. It's my uh, diluted uh, combination of cobalt blue and purple lake uh, and also permanent rose mixed with purple lake. So I am using them both and uh, I am uh, pulling the color uh, through the petal and then with my brush I will be collecting some extras and then I will leave it for a little bit for colors to go in and then separately I would use more of these two combinations uh, to, to add them to the edges and then to uh, paint the main uh, lines uh, which will be like purple, uh, purpley, a purple lake mixed with uh, permanent rose together. I am swapping to the brush uh, of a different size, so I'm using here brush size number zero to get between stamens and to paint edges and corners of the flower. And I'm using cobalt blue with purple like, and then I'm just dropping separately permanent rows in the center of uh, the flower and then in some areas. And I've also pre-mixed uh, the combination of new uh, colors. I mixed Prussian blue mixed with permanent rose to get this really rich, saturated purple color, which I will apply to the center of my uh, flower using my six size brush. And um, I will uh, blend it together and um, with my uh, brush I also will try to pull the color and get rid of that excess paint using lifting the pigment technique. Here I'm just adding permanent rose mixed with purple like and I'm just going over all the stamens and I'm allowing it to bleed and um, I'm using here my brush size number zero and this is a wet on wet technique.
So for painting next layer on my clematis, I would be using two brushes of size 00, which is a tiny one, and a slightly bigger zero size. So I've remixed the colors uh, and I'm going to be using quite strong, quite saturated uh, colors of uh, the mixture with uh, purple lake and Prussian blue together and I am going to be using my uh, thin brush size 00, zero painting wet on dry and I will be making those brush strokes and these uh, little tiny veins all across the petal. So the main principle is that as you look at clematis it's a darker area in the middle of each petal where the strong uh, purplish color in the middle goes. So there in the middle I will be using strong uh, almost like a purple color, dark purple color to paint veins and then the sides of uh, every petal are slightly lighter so they have highlights on them so going across them I will be using weaker combination of colors or perhaps even using purple lake or a little bit of permanent rose together to go across those highlights because if I will be using just one plain color um, I won't see properly all my different tunnel values on this picture. And then I'm doing it to every single petal, moving from one to another so there won't be any smudges or some paint distribution between two uh, neighborhood uh, petals. So I'm just uh, carefully placing next layer and then I am, as you notice, on each petals everywhere uh, with pulling the pigment out of the paper you will see that all the highlights are on a slightly colder spectrum. It's just because of these layers that we put before and they were cold. So they are seen through. And then the last stage, I'm uh, looking at my real reference. That's the importance of having real reference. I noticed that uh, even like a professional can make these mistakes and uh, rely on some reference pictures that's been printed and or that's been edited or something done to them. And they can be very different to an original, to a real thing. So if you have uh, opportunity of having a real uh, reference with you it's the best thing in the world so I urge you to use only real your references uh, all the time so I've compared my uh, flower with a real one and I'm satisfied now and I'm just gonna allow it to dry out completely um, uh, and I will be putting some extra touches on my flower but only once it's dry and the last part is um, I'm comparing my painting with real objects and looking at all the tonal values, contrast and colour uh, choices that I've made and uh, I'm pretty pleased with my results. Certainly it changed a lot with me adding a few darker layers. So I'm quite pleased uh, and I think my painting now is complete. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or um, you wanted to ask something specific. I'm always open for this kind of conversations. Join me on Patreon to watch full tutorial and have a full access to my growing library with watercolor lessons which I add to my channel weekly. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment down below, subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Bye!